Hello everyone and welcome to GLZ Woodworking. I recently put pen to paper on a rather ambitious initiative aimed at addressing Australia's housing crisis by building 1.2 million identical homes over a five-year period, spanning 2025 to 2030. The proposal uses economies of scale, standardized design, and efficient construction processes to generate affordable housing at unprecedented rates. Project overview, construction target, 1.2 million identical homes, Timeline, five years, 2025 to 2030. Annual build rate, 240,000 homes per year. Land requirement, 60,000 hectares, 500 square meters per block. Standardized home design, size, 150 square meters, 1,615 square feet. Layout, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, open plan living area. Construction, steel frame with standardized components. Energy efficiency, seven star Natter's rating. Cost estimates, construction cost per home, $450,000. Total project cost, $729 billion, including land acquisition, infrastructure, project management, and contingency. Key features, identical design, enables rapid construction and significant economies of scale. Energy efficiency, solar panels and energy efficient appliances. Standard in all homes. Smart home technology. Integrated systems for energy management and home automation. Adaptability. Design allows for future modifications to suit changing needs. Implementation, strategy. Centralized manufacturing. Established factories for offsite production of standardized components. Supply chain. Optimization. Secure long-term bulk supply agreements for materials. Workforce development. Large-scale training programs to build the required workforce. Streamlined approvals. Work with governments to create fast-track approval processes. Funding model. The Great Australian Housing Scheme, leveraging national investment. Federal tax incentives. Encouraging investment and participation. Local government incentives. Half price rates for five years for new homeowners. State government contributions. Investments in land and infrastructure. Construction process. I outline a detailed step-by-step -step construction process, ensuring consistency and efficiency across all 1.2 million homes. This includes site preparation, foundation work, steel frame construction, roofing, external cladding, internal fit-out, and finishing touches. Bill of Materials. A comprehensive bill of materials is provided, detailing all components required for each identical home. The standardization enables significant economies of scale in purchasing and streamlines the construction process. Trade skills and responsibilities. My proposal includes a breakdown of essential trade skills required and their key responsibilities emphasizing the need for efficient coordination to meet the ambitious timeline. This transformative approach to addressing Australia's housing crisis through mass production of identical homes aims to deliver high quality, affordable housing at an unprecedented scale and speed. By leveraging standardized design and innovative construction methods, the initiative seeks to create a significant impact on the nation's housing landscape. Want to learn more? To learn more and read the main article in full, visit www.gelswood.w.biz and then simply go to the blog page and look for the article titled, How to Build 1,200,000 Homes in Five Years. All right, listeners, buckle up, because today we're taking a deep dive into something uh, a little different. Oh! Yeah, like way outside the box. Okay, I'm intrigued. Our source material today is an article called How to Build 1,200,000 Homes in Five Years. That's a lot of houses. It is, right? And get this, it's from a woodworking website. A woodworking website? Yeah, called uh, GLZ Woodworking. Huh. Well, that's not where I would have expected to find a solution to the housing crisis. Me neither. We're used to hearing about housing from, you know, economists and policymakers and all that, but this is a woodworking website. So what's their angle? What are they proposing? Well, they're suggesting that Australia's housing crisis can be tackled by 
Well, mass production of identical homes. Mass production, like mm -hmm. cookie cutter houses. Interesting. Yeah, and the article really digs into the details. Really? Oh, yeah, from like, you know, the design and the actual construction process all the way to how they think it should be funded. Mm, color me impressed. I wouldn't have expected that level of detail from a woodworking site. Right, so let's dive into this, as they call it, radical solution. Okay, let's hear it. The basic idea is to build 1.2 million homes, okay? Right. But all identical, each one... 150 square meters over just five years. Wow, that's ambitious. Super ambitious. And they argue that by building these identical homes, by basically prioritizing just having shelter over, you know, individualization, we could solve the housing shortage way quicker and way cheaper. Okay, I see where they're going with this. Kind of like a blank canvas approach, right? People could personalize them later on. Exactly. They even mention that in the article. But it does make you think, right? It does. Could this... Like, shift from focusing on individuality to just efficiency be the key to tackling affordability. Not just in Australia, but everywhere. That's a really interesting question. A big question. Yeah. And it's pretty fascinating how they break down the construction process, too. Oh, yeah. They go step by step from prepping the site and the foundations all the way to putting on the roofs and all the finishing touches. Wow. So they really thought this through. They even have, like, a five-level bill of materials. A five-level? What does that even mean? It's really detailed, listing every single material they would need at every stage. Oh, wow. Right down to the doorknobs. It's insane. That's pretty impressive. It definitely makes it seem less like some crazy idea and more like a legitimate plan. Exactly. And to make sure these homes are attractive to, you know, modern buyers, they've included smart home tech and energy efficiency as standard features. Oh, that's smart. Appealing to buyers, but also good for the environment. Right. Thinking long term. So we've got the blueprints, but how are they planning on paying for all of this? Okay, so for that, they propose something called the Great Australian Housing Scheme. Okay. And it's this nationwide initiative, almost like a call to action. Interesting. So not just government funding. Well, it's a little more complex than that. I figured. They're proposing this national investment scheme that would be open to, well, everyone in Australia. Almost like those war bonds back in the day. Mm, invoking a sense of national unity. Right. And you can invest in this scheme for as little as $5 per unit with a minimum of $50. Wow. So anyone can participate. That's pretty cool. Making it accessible to everyone. Yeah. It's like they're saying, hey, we can all be a part of the solution. I like it. But how do they plan to get the billions they'd need for this from $5 investments? Now that's where it gets really interesting. Okay. I'm listening. It's not just relying on individual investments. Mm. They're also talking about government backing, private investment, and get this, a national lottery with a $10 million monthly prize. A lottery? That's a pretty creative way to raise funds. Right. It definitely adds some excitement to the mix, might even attract people who wouldn't normally invest. Totally. And they actually outline how this whole project could impact, you know, the economy and society in Australia. Yeah. It's obviously about more than just building houses. We're talking about like stabilizing the whole housing market, reducing homelessness, and creating tons of jobs. That's a bold vision. Super bold. They really are aiming for a better future. So they've thought about the money, the design, the construction, the social impact. But what about location? Where are they planning on actually building all these houses? Uh, that's a great question and one they definitely address. Okay, good. Because 1.2 million homes is going to take up a lot of space. It is, yeah. And finding the right locations is key. Absolutely. You need space, but you also have to consider things like access to resources and existing infrastructure, it's a complicated equation. It is, and that's what makes their plan so interesting. They've identified five locations, each chosen strategically to balance all those factors. Five specific locations. Let's hear them. They've picked a mix, actually, four inland and one on the coast. Oh, okay, so a bit of both. Yeah, each with its own, you know, pros and cons. Makes sense. So where are these inland spots they've picked out? Let's see. Uh, there's Tamworth and Narrabri in New South Wales. Okay. Then Wandone in Queensland. Uh huh. And lastly, Salem, Victoria. So, what made them choose those specific spots? Well, they're all areas with, you know, room to grow. Plus, they've got some existing infrastructure already in place, which helps. Which is that would make things easier, right? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, Tamworth, for example. Yeah. It already has a decent population and some, you know, infrastructure set up. So, it could be a smoother transition. And probably save some money, too, right? Potentially, yeah. But building inland, especially in Australia, comes with its own set of challenges, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Like what? Well, water access is a big one. Right. And then there's those extreme temperatures. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Plus, you often need to build a lot of infrastructure from scratch, which adds to the cost. It's like a trade-off, right? Exactly. Cheaper land, but more expensive to actually, you know, build everything up. Yeah, that's a challenge. So like with Wandoen, for example. Yeah, Wandoen's a good example. Tiny population. Right. So you need to invest heavily in infrastructure, everything from power grids to transportation. So how do they decide, like, which trade-off is worth it? Do they just go for the cheapest option overall? Oh, no. They've got a whole cost impact analysis. Really? Yeah. They've factored in everything, like labor costs, the cost of transporting materials, even how the climate could impact construction. Wow. That's pretty thorough. It is. It's how they figure out the most feasible locations for all these new housing hubs. That's smart. So it's not just about, you know, picking a spot on a map. Nope. It's way more complex than that. Okay. But what about people who want to live near the coast? Any options for them? They haven't forgotten about the coast. Okay. They included Geraldton in Western Australia. Ah, so one coastal spot. Yeah, it's the only one. So there's like a mix of options then, inland and coastal. Exactly. Trying to cater to different lifestyles. That makes sense. Yeah. But let's talk about the, you know, the elephant in the room. Oh. Infrastructure. Uh, yes. It's one thing to build houses, but 1.2 million homes, that's like building whole new communities. It is a massive undertaking. So how are they going to handle all that? Well, they have this whole plan. It covers everything. Yeah. Yeah. Transportation, energy, water, waste management. They've thought of it all. So what, like new roads and stuff? Way more than that. We're talking international airports, high-speed rail, renewable energy sources, smart grids, the whole shebang. Wow, it's like they're reshaping the entire country. It's a bold vision, that's for sure. It is. But all that infrastructure, that's got to cost a fortune. It does, yeah. So how does the Great Australian Housing Scheme actually generate that kind of money? Well, it's not just about those $5 investments, remember. Yeah. It's a whole system. They've got government backing, private investment, and that national lottery we talked about. Right, right. All of that working together is how they plan to fund this huge project. Okay, so big vision, detailed plan, clever funding scheme. But what does this all mean for you know the average person? What's the potential payoff for them? Well, according to the article, this project could have some you know pretty huge benefits. Like we, they think it could make like billions in profit every year. Billions. Yeah. What? Yeah, from selling the properties, from rental income, and from the national lottery. Oh right. Right. And then those profits would go back to the investors. So people could actually make money from this. Potentially, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. So it's not just about, like, solving the housing problem. Nope. It's about creating a system that, you know, benefits everyone. Right. So investors could get a return. And at the same time, the country gets more houses, more jobs, a boost to the economy, all that. Exactly. It's like this ripple effect. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. Addressing the housing shortage could stabilize the market, you know, reduce homelessness, even help create a fairer society overall. It's a pretty ambitious goal. It is, but the potential impact, it's huge. It really is. Okay, so the authors clearly put a lot of thought into this, not just the house themselves, but the bigger picture too. Absolutely. But I can't help but wonder about those identical houses. Yeah. Like, I get it, it's efficient. It is. But could there be downsides to, you know, everyone living in the same cookie cutter houses? That's a good point. Honestly, the article doesn't really go into that too much. Oh, really? Yeah, like what would the social or psychological impacts be? That's a question worth asking. Right, right. Would it create a strong sense of community or would it lead to like a, a lack of individuality, make people feel like they're all the same? Yeah, and we've seen before that sometimes these planned communities don't always turn out how people hoped. That's true, it's a complex issue for sure. Definitely no easy answers. But I think this article even if this exact plan never happens, mm -hmm. it makes us think about the housing problem in a whole new way. I agree. It challenges the status quo. Exactly. It makes us consider different solutions, solutions we might not have thought of otherwise. And it shows that, you know, inspiration can come from anywhere. You never know where the next big idea will come from. Right, like a woodworking website? Who knew? Haha, <laughs> exactly. But that's why we do these deep dives, right? Mm. To learn from different perspectives, to understand these complex issues better. And maybe even spark a conversation, inspire new ideas. Maybe even real world solutions. It all starts with knowledge and, you know, critical thinking. Well said. There's always more to learn. And we'll keep bringing you these deep dives into all sorts of fascinating topics right here on The Deep Dive. Keep those minds curious, folks. Until next time, remember, 
The world is full of unexpected sources of inspiration, so keep exploring.